part of the camp we're going into here, um, it's going to be about leadership. We're, we're having a discussion forum where we're talking about leadership, accountability, individuality, overcoming adversity, and anti-bullying. Um, you know, those are those are our main points that we really want to drive home. And it's it's not only for the for the girls and the boys for the camp, but it's also for the parents as well because yeah. there's a lot there's a lot of information. Um, that that that's important for not only the kids to know but the parents as well because sometimes there can be that disconnect between the parent and the kid uh as far as understanding one another so it's a lot that we want to do to help bridge that gap especially now who's teaching it though are you teaching some of the classes to yes the kids? yes it's okay. going to be it's going to be myself along with uh, a couple of my other teammates that are coming to okay. speak and uh other people that i have coming uh i also have some uh, artists coming some business uh, some businessmen and businesswomen and uh, other athletes, men and women. So it's, okay. uh, That's cool it's a pretty though, good for the kids deal, to man. See. Yeah. Absolutely. You gotta, a lot of times, you know, people say, you know, they, you want kids to reach for things. You want them to be things. You want them to aspire to do things. And uh, I want to give them an actual visual of what, you know, they could reach for. So. Because what I heard was you didn't know uh anything what you're gonna do until your coach come and said son what are you gonna do yeah literally <laughs> shout out to coach young shout out to our uh <laughs> you know when we was in college i mean when i was in high school uh i was one of those guys that i had all the potential to do and be anything i wanted to but i didn't know how to connect all the dots right and one day Coach Young just stopped me. He was like, hey, man, talk to me real quick. Uh, what do you want to do when you get out of here? I, I want to go play ball. He was like, uh, you you want to play ball? I was like, yeah. He was like, <laughs> you, got, you got a long way to go, son. <laughs> and then, like, once I went, – initially he said in a funny way, but once I really sat down and looked at it, man, like, I had so much work to do because I, I had to realize how serious of a commitment I was making – to myself and how, how much work that I actually had to put in on a day in and day out basis to really make a significant change to, to matter to get to college. And then once you get to college, you got to up it to another notch again because you got to be able to separate yourself from everybody who's in college to make yourself one of the top guys to be, you know, acknowledged as far as getting drafted or getting signed. So I was Now, this is your coach right here, right, that that spoke up to you and said, hey, what's going on? What did you see in him? Like, did you see that potential and you're like, he needs to be pushed? Or, like, do you see the potential in the kids that come through the school system and, and you're like, okay, this one's really going to be a star one day? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's my calling. Um, I've been teaching and coaching in the Wake County Public School System for 15 years. Um, and um, when I saw CEO uh, in school, he was a popular guy, but he would do little things like, you know, not be on time to class or get a B instead of an A. And to be a Division One athlete, to stand out, you got to be the total package. So that's why I told him he had a lot more to, to mature and gain to be able to have that responsibility and have that opportunity to get to the next level. Okay. And um, we're just going to be real quick and tell you something. There's somebody here that you hadn't seen in a while? Really? Yeah. Okay, okay. It's not like an old girlfriend or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you got my heart beating right now. You know, I just got back to the car. Like, I got surprises. Is he back? Yep. Right. Yeah, in, in just a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll tell you here in just a minute. So, so. Wait, do you have any old girlfriends that you don't want to see? Are we live? Every guy. Yes. <laughs> Everybody does. We'll turn around real quick. Hey! <laughs> Manny! What's going on, man? What's up, Sam? How you doing, Prince? I'm good. How are you? Listen, I can see my principal not getting in trouble anymore. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll take that. Hey. Hey, man. Mr. White, how you doing, man? How you? How's it going, man? Jeez, man, you hey, look man. good, bro. I was in the neighborhood. Yeah? No. You look good, yeah, man. Yeah, too. Look at this old thing you got going yeah, I, on. Yeah, I, I got something. I got something for you. Hey, listen, I like seeing my principal now, because guess what? We can be on good terms always. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he get in trouble in school? Well, not so much, but I heard he was going to be here, 
And I thought we might be able to get that money for the Spanish book that he has. <laughs> <laughs> or what? Or was it the Spanish grade? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, what had happened was. Yeah. <laughs> did I lose more? Uh, That's your, your microphone. I mean, you don't have to wear them. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, Principal White. See, I'm what is going. going on, man? It's good. How about you? I'm glad to see you. I'm happy to see, bro. You look good, man. Well, they're working me too hard. Yeah, we're at, oh, we're in friendship now, huh? In a new school, yeah. Man, Probably I like gotta, you, you know, you stay with one team for a while, and then yeah, another opportunity another comes opportunity up, and you got to make the move. Man, you got the next little buzz cut now. You yeah. see, that was a different look. You didn't yeah, have the true. buzz cut. It's gotten, it's, gotten, it's gotten gray, so I had to trim it a little bit. He's a he's the best pre principal. In this is this is my guy now. Yeah, he is. This is this is my guy now. He's I great. mean. Now wait, do you remember all the students that come to, like, are you, can you physically do that where you remember everybody? Seriously? <laughs> um, it, but it's you know kind of interesting. Faces. Well, we would, we would typically have a graduating class of 500. Oh my gosh. I was there for nine years, yeah. so just do the math. Right. I recognize a lot of faces, but I don't remember everybody's name. Right? Yeah. But this one, you know. I think yeah. I got a couple of gray hairs up there. Yes, I think he does have a couple of them. <laughs> but no, she is a good boy. In fact, you know, you would have thought a big macho football player would have been um, strutting his stuff on campus, but it was interesting because a couple times CO was a peacemaker, and some other guys would get kind of wound up. Right. CO would step in and say, "Settle it down," and clearly they thought mm, maybe that's the best thing to do. Right. <laughs> not you. Right. Uh, certainly, we wouldn't have had to wanted to jump in on CO to Man. step in, but okay. now he's a good boy. He's a good student. He worked hard. Uh, we we had to work pretty hard to. to Get you up to UConn, but yeah. you, you did a good one. One teacher in particular, right? Mm -hmm. a little Spanish teacher yep. that helped you out. Yeah, you man, Mrs. Hatch, man. You know, I say this, man. When I was at Apex, uh, Apex is a school. When I went there, man, it was really about the community, man. It was really like I was, like I, I make no mistake to say I was a village kid. But, you know, I had a bunch of people that's always been there supporting me and helping me and. Uh, like whether it was family, friends, teachers, like I had a lot of people that didn't allow me to give up on my dreams, even when I didn't even know exactly what they were. You know, I I mean, Miss Hatch, uh, Principal White, Coach Young, uh, uh, I mean from Miss Jones, who was my uh, my math teacher. She she used to ride my head like it was no other. Coach Bristol, <laughs> Coach Wolf. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, there's, there's, there's a, there, I mean, it, the it list, took a village. It, it took, took it a took, village. it took a complete village of. I mean, it took Apex High School to get me to realize. Listen, you can be somebody special, man. And like everybody that was there, they, they, they really put a hand in and, and, and allowed me to uh, blossom, man. And that, and that's what it's about, man. Because you never know what any would would. Each and every one, they could, any one of them could have turned around. They could have not put that much into me. They could have not invested that much, but they did. And I'm forever grateful for that now. Now, what do you say about kids, though, that are kind of lost and maybe they were like on the fence of doing the right thing or being a good kid and kind of falling off the wagon? What advice do you have for those kids? <clears throat> to reevaluate, look in the mirror. Look, look what you're doing. A lot of times, uh, a lot of times, a lot of kids that are followers, they're really the leaders. They just don't see it. They don't realize it yet. They don't. They don't realize their potential. They don't see their potential. Look at what you're doing. If you if you were to stop what you're doing, and you were to go a completely different direction, would it cause would it cause like a big deal around the people that you're around? Would would it make everybody say, well, why is he doing that? If that's the case, then you were the leader the entire time. They were just waiting for you to to, to act. To blossom, yeah. You know, um, I think. There's no, there's no point in playing in the grade being on the fence. Either you're going to be in or you're going to be out. Because you sit there, you sit on the fence, and something's going to prick your butt. You know. It's... What was the day, though, that you decided? Do you remember the day that you decided, I'm going to stop being the boy but and start being the man? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I, it was going into my senior year in high school. Uh, I left for the summer, and um, I wanted to go see my mom. Like I told you, I lived with my sister for high school down here in Carolina. My mom was up in Connecticut. I, I missed my mom, 
because my sister was getting on my nerves <laughs> and I was, re was ready to go back and live with my mom, excuse me. And uh, by the time I got up there, I had everything kind of like set out for me. You know, they were like, hey, you can come back to school, you can go back to school, uh, you play ball, we're setting you up, everything was nice. And I called coach and I was like, well, this, this works out perfect for me. I called coach Wolf, I'm like, hey, coach Wolf, you know, I think I'm about ready to, you know, stay up here with my mom. I think I want to stay back, want to move back up here. And instead of being angry, he was like, listen, I love you, son. You know, uh, if that's what you choose to do, you know, uh, you know, I'll stand by you, you know, appreciate everything. And I took the night off and I just thought about it and I was like, nah, I can't be that kind of guy. Yeah. Like these guys, they, they believed in me and they, and they never quit on me and I'm not, I'm not going to quit on them. And, uh, I went back home. <laughs> I had to do a couple of workouts. I had to catch up. I had to. I had to definitely catch up because I was late during the season, coming to, coming into the season. But I had to make that decision of like, you know what? I'm gonna whatever I start, I'm gonna finish because I'm not gonna give up on my teammates. I'm not gonna give up on the people that put themselves and their time up for me to to be a better person. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give that back. Hello. And Coach Wolf is a he's a great guy and great coach, but I'm gonna be honest with you. When he when Coach Wolf told me CO wasn't coming back, I was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say the same thing. I was like, this guy, he he better come back. You know, so I'm just being transparent when he said that. We've got CO Moore in studio, uh Apex native and now uh linebacker with the Indianapolis Colts, and now you're back in town. And is there anybody that you weren't friends with or that you didn't really talk with when you were in school here that now reaches out to you going, hey, so uh, how you doing? Let's oh, hang out when man. you come to town. Listen, you, know? you get it all the time. Sometimes it's like you got to come home incognito because you don't want it to turn into a freaking parade yeah. of people. And then everybody's like, hey, why don't you come hang out with me? Hey, let's go hang out here. And it's like. Where I got with so much time. Where were well, you? Not, it, you know, it's, I mean, you can look at it in that sense, but it's like, you know, when you come home, it's like at the same time, I'm here, I'm training, I'm working out. I still have to maintain and be focused. I can't just go and hang out with everybody and try to, can't just turn into yeah. a whole family reunion, you know what I mean? Because on top of that, everybody has stuff to do, right? Yeah. So, you, you know, you make time where it is. But, uh, you know, the one thing I will say is, you know, since going into the league the last couple of years, you start to see all of a sudden there, there are a lot of new people, new faces, and then out of nowhere you start getting these new relatives that pop up oh, out of nowhere, sure. and it's like, oh yeah, I met your cousin, and like, from where? Kentucky, I don't even know anybody in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you guys do? So, you have to play the game, but what if you have the flu? What do you do when, can you be out? You can't be out during a game. Oh man, you know, the, the thing about it is, you know, they definitely work on, you know, player safety and whatnot, but the you know, you as a player, you got to do everything you can to be ready when it's time to go. They you know? hydrate you or whatever. Yeah, man, you got to, you, being a professional man, you, you don't allow yourself to not be prepared, you know. You can't call out sick out of work like somebody <laughs> nah, on a regular you can't, job. Yeah, you can't just be like, you know, I'm not going to make it today. <laughs> so have you ever played, though, when you're sick and you're just like, I just got to be out there? Yeah, I've, I've played, I, I remember in college, I had a game. That was probably the most sick I was. It was my senior year. We played Maryland, and I had a screaming fever. It was probably 101 or something like that. And I was like, I had one that morning, and it broke. Uh, I, I mean, I was taking every, I was hydrating, and I was doing everything possible. And I had a game. I had a, I had one of the best games of my career, man. Sick, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. You got to be able to fight through. You got to be able to answer any kind of adversity that comes to you, you know. And if you would could see him, he is a big SOB. He is a big... <laughs> I can't be SOB! Because if I, if I just saw, saw him on the side of the road, I'd be like, oh my God. I'm not going to mess with him. He is... Bob said he wanted to do some tackle drills after after this segment, so we're going to go outside and see what he's got. By the way... <laughs> They did they did a photo shoot the other day, Bob and CO, and you have to see the Bob the Showgram dot com because he tossed him over his shoulder. That was my favorite part, CO, when you picked Bob up and threw, threw I don't think he'd I don't think he'd seen it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I did. girling out, right? I thought my look how fat I am and <laughs> you hold him my fat. He was winded. 
<laughs> he was so excited though when you were there. Like Lou was here, Bob's wife, and we were sitting on the side, and you could see how excited Bob was to be doing like these little tackle things that y'all are doing. Well, did you see his helmet? I was like, what are we bringing the helmet? I mean, that helmet is uh, that's, old school. Yeah, I mean, hey. like Fred Flintstone type helmet. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't know if I could have played with one of those on. I don't know. But, hey, I commend you, bro. I commend you, man. I, it's, this this is an experience, man. And is this the yearbook from when you were in high school? This is the yearbook. Yeah, I, you were talking about when you when you knew what you were going to do and your vision and all that stuff. So I found the Apex High yearbook from 2008, and it's got one of those sections that's in every man. yearbook. Ten years from now, where will they be? You know, one person said the Spanish ambassador from the United States. Somebody said painting the Sistine Chapel. But there's C.O. Moore playing professional football in the NFL. Good wow. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. So that means that you can do whatever you want to do. You just got to put your mind to it. You've got to, you've got to buy into what you believe in. Yeah. You literally have got to buy into it. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what somebody thinks. It doesn't matter the obstacles it don't matter the hurdles it doesn't matter the, the mountain you just got to believe you can top it and the more you tell yourself the more you figure out ways to do it now i said i was going to be oprah and i didn't quite make it so well, i need to yeah. just keep saying <laughs> yeah. that i mean <laughs> what do i need to do to get there <laughs> yeah. i mean uh, man I, I this is bringing me back to so many memories right now man like I got a freaking razor phone clip, all right, <laughs> on my hip. I got a white belt. We're in the middle of school, man. I never, and it's crazy, you know. I I, I to say it back when I was in high school, but I didn't know how I was gonna be able to do. It. I had no idea how to get there. Is I, it as hard as you? I okay. It's hard to get there. Once you get there, it's hard to stay in. Yeah. You get older, and then they get younger, and they're coming in, and they're coming to well, you. Well, that's like down. when you said, if you if you're sick, what do you do? Yeah. If if you sit down, there's somebody else right behind you. They're waiting to get their chance. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You are expendable. You're trying to be friends with them, but you yeah. know that person's absolutely. trying to take your job. Absolutely. So it's kind of like there's a balance, man. You've got to be able to work with guys. You got to be able to help guys out, but you also got to be able to differentiate differentiate yourself. And make it known as to why you're irreplaceable. We're going to do a break, and we'll come back, and we're going to have uh, people call and ask questions. Just basic football questions. Like you know? common questions, like, do you do your own laundry? <laughs> Don't say it now. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to know that part.